In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can create dramatic portraits on a budget. What's up everyone, Pete Coco here. Thank you so much for joining me. And today I wanted to do a video talking about how you can create awesome dramatic portraits on a budget. Now, we photographers are crazy when it comes to gear. And a lot of us think that if we just buy this new piece of gear, we're gonna be a better photographer. Now, I don't wanna get into the weeds of that subject because I feel like that's a subject for another video and there's a lot to say there too. But in a nutshell, buying better gear will not make you a better photographer because the gear isn't gonna teach you about light. So having great gear is fine and all, and I like having good gear myself. And uh, you know, I love the latest and greatest, but if you don't learn how to use it, it's not gonna matter. So what I wanted to do today was put together this quick video to show you how you don't have to spend a ton of money on gear to get great results. And I decided to use a very popular lighting that is dramatic and that looks cool and that people really love, which is Rembrandt lighting. Now, Rembrandt lighting is basically a kind of light that was developed by the painter and he used it in his work. And as photographers, this is something we use all the time. You'll see it in film, you'll see it on TV, you'll see it in portrait work. And Rembrandt light, in a nutshell, you have one side of the face in shadow, except for a triangle of light underneath the eye on the shadow side. Uh, if you wanna learn more about Rembrandt lighting, I suggest you just look up some tutorials on YouTube because this is a kind of key lighting that we all learn as photographers. So for this tutorial, I'm using a Yang Yao, and I think I'm pronouncing that right, forgive me if I'm not, off-brand flash, which is basically a copy of a Canon flash, and I'm using the same brand transmitter on the camera. And I have that flash off camera, modified with a Joe McNally Easy Box, which is 24 by 24 inches. And one of the key components of this setup is I have a grid on the soft box. That's it. Then I even used a Canon RF Nifty 50 lens because I didn't want to use an expensive lens on the camera. And in fact, the only thing in this tutorial that's expensive is the camera, but that's because I only have one, it's the R5. So I use the R5, but if you have any brand camera, this will work. If you have a cheap 50 millimeter lens, just use that. You don't have to go spend any money on gear. I created three looks with this light and I didn't move anything but my face. So that's the other thing I wanna show you is that you can create a variety of lighting looks by just moving the person's face around. You don't even have to move yourself around. So there's so much you can do without going crazy and getting overwhelmed with gear and with lighting setups and with multiple lights and all of this. So if you have a white wall behind you and I was about probably about eight feet from the wall, it's gonna come out gray. So you don't even need a gray backdrop. It's very budget friendly. Okay, so the key is in order to get this effect, what you wanna do is you want to position yourself or your subject so that the light modifier is just hitting the edge of your face. And I have it a little bit high and pointed down, ever so slightly at an angle. What you don't want to do is have the modifier pointed directly at you or, or almost directly at you. Because what you're going to do if you do that is get a very flat light. But what we want is a three-dimensional dramatic light with a lot of fall off from the brights to the shadows. So you have to make sure that that modifier edge is sort of like right at the edge of your face. That's the first step. The next step is to use the grid. So the difference is if I didn't have the grid on there, the light's gonna spread further. By putting the grid on the front of the soft box, what it does is it narrows the beam and it really makes the light a lot more concentrated around my face area, which is gonna help to create the drama. That's it. Now, I'm not even gonna give you settings because you wanna experiment. It depends on what gear you're using, but I can tell you that I had the flash set relatively low so I wouldn't put it high. I definitely, you're not going to need it any more than like half power for using an off camera flash like I'm doing here. I would say try it around one quarter power, which is where I had it and experiment from there. That's it. That's all I did. 
Now, if you're taking your own self-portrait, you do want to have, obviously, a camera that has an interval timer or an app or something like that. But I highly recommend you try this and you try it out with a friend or a family member or some unwilling subject so you can practice it. And I bet that most of you who have already been watching my videos probably have all of this gear or similar kinds of gear like this lying around somewhere. So you might not even have to buy anything. So let's go over the three looks that I was able to achieve with this lighting setup. And we're gonna start with the head-on look. Now this is basically a, a, a head-on portrait. And you can see that the light fall off is very dramatic, but underneath the camera right eye, you can see there's a triangle of light there, which is what we want when we're doing the Rembrandt lighting. And because I have the modifier feathered quite heavily, the light is really going only going to hit the camera left side of my face and it's gonna wrap around ever so slightly without really having a lot of light on the camera right side. So you can see that my right side, including my ear and my cheek and my jaw and some of my and my neck and some of my shoulder is in shadow. That's a head-on shot and that's basically how you can create this sort of look. Now, the cool thing is by, like I said before, by just moving my head, I'm going to create two more very different kind of looks. So check this out. Now, this is one of my favorite kind of go-to poses for my portrait clients. And I found that people in corporate or in acting in very different fields really like this kind of a pose. So what I did here is I basically looked towards the light and you can see that the fall off changes completely. Now it's not really Rembrandt lighting anymore, but it's very, very interesting light. It's, I guess it maybe looks almost like a beauty dish because I have a big shadow underneath my chin. Um, but the light fall off is, is very pleasing. It still has a lot of shadow detail. And by looking up at the light, it kind of gives that, that sort of um, like looking into the future sort of expression. So, so things are looking up. It's almost like one of those like political posters. So all I did, I didn't change not one setting on the camera or the flash. I just looked towards the light. Then the third thing I did was look away from the light. So now we're creating a very different look again by just looking away from the light. So this is like a, a dramatic broad lighting because I'm, I'm lighting the broad side of the face. And then the shadow side is completely in shadow. Now the final step in creating this look that I did was to edit them. Uh, now editing and I, I really spent about five minutes editing these, photo, these photos. And the way I edited them was using one of my favorite programs, which is Dehancer, which makes film simulations. I do have a promo code from Dehancer, so if you wanted to pick up that program, you can get 10% off using my promo code, which is just my name, Pete Coco. But putting that aside, I like Dehancer because I can create a variety of really interesting and unique looks and film looks very easily and quickly, because sometimes you don't have an hour to spend on each photo. So what I did with these three images, the three that I liked from my mini shoot of my own face is I put them in to Dehancer and I used one of the film sims and then I edited it a little bit in Dehancer and that was it. So there you go. It's that simple. Well, that's all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this quick video. Don't forget to gently press that like button, hit the subscribe button. And if you want to keep up with my latest videos, go ahead and hit that notification bell because I post them randomly at all times of day and of night. Here's wishing you an awesome day with your camera. Go out and take some great pictures and I will see you next time. Bye for now.